for your latest information, get expert opinion on an issue affecting us as Malaysians and citizens of the world. When we go face to face with our guests on Thursdays at 11:15 a.m. only on Tracks FM. That's right. Once again, welcome back to the show. Hi, this is Gilbert here. And uh, for those of you who just happen to join us on Face to Face, as you know, Face to Face uh, takes it in action on our program, which is Momentum. And this happens on Thursdays. And today, very interesting topic as we were talking earlier about it. If you'd like to know more details about uh, some of the fantastic research Malaysia uh, has always been doing, has always been indulging in. But the problem is uh, we never took uh, a little initiative to find out details on this. What is a frozen zoo, and uh, all the research that has been held at the International Islamic University in Malaysia, and uh, we are really honoured to have Associate Professor Dr. Mohammad Lokman Mohammad Isa, who is the chairman of the International Islamic University in Malaysia on uh, molecule, mo- molecule and uh, cellular biology research cluster which is also known as IMOLAC. He's also the head of Central Research Animal Facility and what they call as CREAM. So if you'd like to know more details about the uh, topic that we are, be, uh, we will be discussing uh, in today's program which is Face to Face and would like to thank uh, my producer Juliana for putting up the show. Thank you so much to uh, you as listeners who are tuning in to Trax FM. And uh, right now, what's going to happen is we're going to try to uh, uh, find out all those details, as I mentioned earlier on, from uh, Associate Professor Dr. Mohamad Lokman Mohamad Issa. And uh, Professor, a very good morning to you. Are you on the line, Professor? Yes, I'm here. A very good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, taking time off and being with us uh, here on the program. It's really an honor to have uh, somebody who has got into something which is, uh, I, I should say, is really dynamic in uh, some of the research that uh, I managed to read yesterday. I did a little homework and uh, it's amazing to see where Malaysia is heading when it comes to uh, in the scientific world. Thank you so much once again, uh, Professor, for being with us. And um, just, just to give our listeners a little interesting introduction. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I would like to uh, um, just to let our listeners know uh, and uh, just a little uh, intro in uh, what our government vision is and uh, how um, this particular program that we are having right here in Malaysia plays an important role. Is that okay, Professor? Just hang in a minute. Uh, uh, just to keep our listeners informed. Now, it was announced during the tabling of Budget 2022 that the government will provide 450 million ringgit to various uh, ministries. And this is to improve several initiatives and one which includes the uh, third uh, initiative that there will be a location being set aside to assist zoos with operating costs and uh, efforts to increase the breeding of the Malayan tiger and the implementation of the frozen zoo program to preserve the uh, um, survival of endangered species. As uh, you head on to our Facebook page, it's right on our page. If you'd like to talk to us, you can also do so um, on, on our Facebook page that is uh, Tracks FM Official. And um, uh, once again, just to keep you reminded, Associate Professor Dr. Mohamed Lokman Mohamed Issa is with us. And um, uh, Professor, could you just give us a little insight on uh, your professionalism? Very interesting one for our listeners' sake. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me uh, to this uh, uh, discussion. Actually. You're, so, wel- uh, you're welcome. Yeah. So uh, I'm actually um, uh, uh, the lecturer from uh, IUN, International Islamic University, and uh, I'm heading a molecular and cellular biology research cluster uh, for about... Uh, it, it, it was started 2013 uh, until now. And then, uh, actually, I'm graduated from uh, Sheffield University. I did my PhD there, uh, related to uh, regenerative medicine, uh, stem cell biology. And then when I come back here, uh, I start to do uh, teaching, of course, and uh, research uh, related to uh, sperm production into the human that, uh, into the man that having no sperm production, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, starting on um, 2016, uh, I met a group from uh, Sabah, which is Sab- uh, Bora, uh, Bora, which is uh, Borneo Rhinos um, Alliance, right. uh, that having kind of uh, conservation activities related to 
to Master and Rhinos. Ah, okay. But Very interesting. Yeah, Master and Rhinos that, that uh, 2019 considered as extinct already in Malaysia. And then, uh, but fortunately, we as a group work together and um, uh, our labs, I mean, uh, Ibolite lab managed to derive the cell. Means that from the tissue of the Sumatran rhinos, we managed to get the cell, the primary cell, and then um, we keep the cell, we culture the cell, we keep them growing until uh, we manage to get the lines of the uh, Sumatran rhinos. The cell line, which we call, I mean, the cell that immortal, that never die. And then uh, we freeze them and then we put in the uh, very low temperature of the freezer, negative 160. And then uh, we, and that's the frozen zoo started actually, yeah. Right, right. Um, Professor, yes, I was doing a little read-up about uh, what Frozen Zoo uh, is all about, but this is, will be added in the question later. Um, yeah. do, does Malaysia have a, a Malaysian zoo? When was it organi- uh, uh, created, um, uh, Professor? Was it in 2013 in Malaysia, as you uh, mentioned? Yeah, the molecular, I mean, uh, the iMolec was started on 2013. Ah, we, okay. We're just doing something related to... Uh, clinical and uh, uh, laboratory research mm-hmm. you know, uh, related to human. Uh, okay. But in 2016, we start to engage with the endangered species and uh, actually frozen zoos start to, to be developed uh, starting 2016, to be honest. Yeah. So 2016. Okay, okay, yeah. Professor. Professor, um, well, here, here we would like to find out the team behind this effort. Now, do you work with other departments? Are they affiliated with uh, your department? Yeah, uh, inside the IUM, we're working together because of IMOLEC itself is comprised of uh, uh, the members from a different, uh, we call it here, Kulia, uh, Kulia faculty. Mm-hmm. So, uh, comprised of six faculty, we pull up all the experts here mm-hmm. and then uh, we establish this kind of aspect. And at the same time, uh, Something like what I said now, um, uh, on 2016, we start to uh, collaborate with the Bora from Sabah. Mm-hmm. And also we have, uh, uh, co- co- I mean, we work together with the uh, Pahili Tan, okay. uh, Sabah Wildlife Department. Okay. Yeah. Um, Professor, what is the, um, why is it vital for us to ensure that uh, endangered species and their uh, habitat has, uh, um, uh, does exist among us? Um, um, why is it vital for, for us as uh, uh, part of this beautiful world that we have? Yeah, um, to be honest, if you have a look, we are living together, human, animals, plants, mm-hmm. yeah, and producing a good environment. Yeah. We right. need it, to be honest. But the human is the one that, that rules the world, something like that, right? right. Uh, this is related to biodiversity. You uh-huh. know, it's like, uh, because it's like linking, you know? Like, uh, if the wild animal being uh, replenished or extinct in this world, so uh, we will having a problem as well. Or, pro- for example, like, uh, we do, like, deforestation, we change the forest into the urban thing. Right. You know, at the end of the day, the animal will no longer have the space to live. Okay? Yeah. When they no they longer have the space to live, they will come to us. They will come to our human habitat. That's, that's that, what is ha- has happened in uh, some of the uh, forests where um, uh, humans have moved in and we have intruded into their territory of even hunting, right? Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. And then sometimes we heard about like an uh, elephant come into the village, you know, that's because they don't have any place to go because we occupy their the place, you know. And then uh, at the end of the day, like COVID-19, you know, we are having problems with that because of the zoonotic disease. Zoonotic disease that comes from animals. Animals that actually, uh, the virus is actually uh, uh, living happily in the animal no problems but then because we interrupt them so those kind of virus uh, jump into ourselves and become some problems you know yes because uh, of peace and uh, chaos in the whole of the world to be honest. yeah 
I understand, Professor. So there you go. That's how it all started. Uh, actually, we are the intruders, isn't it, sometimes? <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't blame the animal. <laughs> okay, Professor, moving on to our next question. Here. Now, how long has the frozen zoo existed uh, in Malaysia? We have already discussed it. But when did it really start, Professor? Where, which country um, um, that really initiated this effort? Yeah, if you have, if you heard about the uh, San Diego uh, frozen zoo in America, uh, they are looking into. They try to to uh, to, uh, to do research related to bring back the white uh, white rhinos. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is like initiative that um, that we are trying to mimic them. You now because of uh, we are fortunate to have the cell, the the line. You know the the um the life cell uh mm. which large is that, tissue right of of the, that uh species yeah uh, not the life tissue but the life cell because tissue is when the animal dies so the tissue is no longer uh useful to be honest we right. need the that still keep on living so and then we can freeze them and then we can store it back and then we can use them back you know okay uh, i understand so, uh, if a tissue is like a piece of meat, you know, that will, uh, you know, so uh, not to be used anymore. Uh, because nowadays, what we have is only like, a, like I said, a piece, of, a, a piece of tissue or maybe a genetic material, something like that. Okay? If we just have those kind of things, uh, those things is just for the sake of we look into the database and so on. We cannot do um, more activity or more technology related to that. If we have the cell, that l- the living cell, we can have like a lot of technology. Perhaps you, uh, I mean, the, like a cloning, you know, we can uh, do the cloning and then uh, we can uh, uh, bring back the animal. Perhaps I can discuss with you later related to this more after this, yeah. Um, Professor, uh, is this something like how, um, uh, well, I'm asking from a Mundian p- point of view, is this something like how uh, Jurassic Park, uh, th- th- that is just a little bit on that, on the, on the research part of it, is it something like that? And what, what are, when we talk about Frozen Zoo, is it something like that? Uh, it is quite similar to that. But then if Jurassic Park, they, they only have like a, like a, genetic material that they need, they need to go further more of uh, tissue engineering to produce those kind of things. But right. now we, we have the living cell already. We have the cell already. We have the nucleus, the DNA material that's still alive that we can just do, we can just do cloning on that kind of thing. So it's like we can uh, um, uh, bypass uh, half of the initiative to produce like what we mentioned about Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah okay. <laughs> from the Mandian point of view and uh, while well, we had a couple of guests here who also uh, who will be planning to do um, the uh, booster shot drive uh, for COVID-19 in RTM and uh, yeah. when I told them about this topic about a frozen zoo and uh, all this and everybody was so surprised and uh, yeah they haven't heard of a frozen zoo in Malaysia they have yeah. heard of a frozen zoo, and that was in uh, San Diego in the United States, as you mentioned. Uh, it was yeah. around the 70s, right, Professor? Yeah. When it first yeah. initiated. Yeah. And then they got a bit more into detail and all that. Yeah. So uh, it's a very interesting topic. If you just happen to join us right here on Tracks FM, this is Momentum Face to Face and Face to Face, an award winning program, has always tackled uh, topics like this, something that really mesmerizes you. And uh, what we're going to do here, Professor, Professor, we're going to take a short break in identity uh, for our station and we will be back. Stay with us, okay. Professor. Stay with us. Thank you. For your latest information, get expert opinion on an issue affecting us as Malaysians and citizens of the world when we go face-to-face with our guests on Thursdays at 11.15 a.m. Only on Tracks FM. Welcome back to the show. Hi, this is Gilbert here, my producer, Juliana, on Face to Face. Uh, the program is a momentum. Happens from Mondays right up till Fridays from 10 in the morning right up till 2 o'clock. And uh, today, it's really honored to... Uh 
talk together with uh, Associate Professor Dr. Mohammad Lokman Mohammad Issa. He's the Chairman of International Islamic University in Malaysia, Molecular and uh, Cellular. Uh, and of course, uh, this is the Biology Research Cluster, Head of Central Research Animal Facility. And uh, it is also known as uh, IMOLEC or the Head of Research Animal Facility is known as CREAM. A very interesting topic that we are discussing today. And uh, this is with regards of uh, the frozen zoo, as you know, that uh, endangered species will have hope. We are discussing on uh, what the whole method or, or, or planning of this particular strategy is all about how Malaysia is heading towards the future, and how we can save the endangered species. And uh, with the Associate Professor Dr. Mohammad Lokman together with us right here. Professor? Yes? Uh, yes, Professor. Okay, now jumping into our next question here, um, could you just tell us uh, the species currently included under this particular program that we have in Malaysia? As you just mentioned earlier on, it was the white rhinos. Uh, but what about Malaysia? All right. Okay. Uh, okay. We already have like uh, uh, we already established. I mean, we have the facility of the frozen zoo uh, starting 2019. Okay, and then uh, the species so far that we have is the, of course Sumatran rhinos, the last three of Sumatran rhinos, which is um, Iman, Kertam, and Puntong. Yeah, the three names, and then uh, we have the set lines of them. And then we also have the Malayan tigers, the Malayan tape, uh, pangolin, um, gaur. And then we also have like uh, tamadao. Tamadao is a species of uh, gaur as well, but only available in Sabah, or we call it banting. Right, okay. Some good yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we also have the clouded leopard as well. Yeah, and then, uh, but those kind of things is... Uh, more on mammalian animals, yeah? We're looking into, like, a proboscis monkey and orangutan soon, yeah. Okay, and, uh, yeah. You, Professor, you've also uh, explained to us on how the frozen zoo can help bring back species from extinction. Uh, we remember yeah. we went a bit more detail, but uh, just for our listeners, uh, Professor did explain to us in how the whole method of uh, saving this endangered species from being extinct uh, and how, uh, particularly, um, IMOLAC and also uh, the head of uh, Central Research Animal Facility, CREAM, uh, at the International Islamic University in Malaysia, uh, Malaysia uh, you know, effortly um, uh, putting in all their effort to uh, keep these uh, species alive, uh, Professor. Professor, moving on to our next question here. Now, how do we identify which species is suitable for the program and criteria involved in selecting these species? Yeah, uh, before I answering that question, uh, I just want to, en uh, to enhance that actually... Um, the animal that we collect, the species, I mean, the, the material that we collect from the animal, actually, uh, when the animal is about dying, something mm -hmm. like animal having, like, car accident, for example, tapi is already, is quite frequent, we're having that kind of sample. Having car accident, they die for, like, um, less than two or three hours, something like that, and then we go and collect them. And uh, we never did yet the animal that's still alive. Uh, because it's going to be like a, a little bit ethical issue on that, you know. Right, and maybe yes. Maybe can cause harmful to that animal. Okay, related to the uh, criteria uh, of the endangered species, normally we're looking into the IUCN, which is International Union for Conservation of Nature, the red list. The red list, that, uh, the red list of animals that are uh, available in Malaysia. So we try to identify... And then, uh, of course, we're going to work. We work. We are working with uh, Pahilitan in Semenanjung and Sabah Wildlife in Sabah uh, to ensure and to uh, to identify which kind of animal that uh, endangered. And then uh, we uh, will try to find the tissue and then try to derive the cell from the tissue that we got from the animal. Something like that. Yeah. Right, okay. The, the, the future possibilities for achieving all this, Professor, how would you look at it uh, in the future for Malaysia and in the future to preserve um, uh, these endangered species? Yeah, um, to be honest, uh, we, I mean, IMOLEC will uh, 
having like uh, we'll upgrade ourselves into institute uh, level in IUM, which is we we we're gonna call we name it as the Institute of Sustainable Health. Okay, on that kind of platform, we're gonna work uh, together with all the scientists from the climate change researcher and also from the biodiversity. We're gonna work together in order to produce sustainable. Uh, health in our in Malaysia at least you know so uh, with kind of initiative we believe that we can go further because now we are in, on the platform of research cluster it's a bit smaller but when we become an institute we can do better with uh, better linkages uh, with all the international and so on and to tell you even we having like uh, interaction between uh uh, the, our region country, regional country like Indonesia, Singapore, uh, Brunei, and also Thailand, even uh, India, we want to have like because our region is the tropic region that we are uh, we full with the uh, endangered species, flora and fauna. So we want to have like a center for endangered cell bank, something like that. You know? Right. We want okay. to at least this kind of thing, and then we want to put in, maybe uh, we, we can station it in any kind of our, of the countries so that we can share uh, those kind of material and we can do better technology related to the material that we have. Yeah. Yes, but looking positively, uh, as you know, I mean, as uh, what I mentioned earlier on, on how the uh, budget 2022 was tabled, and uh, while we are looking, we are, we are hoping to see a brighter light here with the amount located for um, this particular research that we are doing here in Malaysia. Professor, congratulations for uh, all the efforts and uh, yes, for where you are today. Um, well, thank you so much for making Malaysia proud. And uh, before that, <laughs> Professor, uh, just here for our listeners uh, who are tuning in to us uh, through our Facebook page. And uh, we'd like to say hi and a very good morning to you, Lee Manhui, Syed Fazil, uh, Cecilia, Cecilia Aria, Patricia Lim, Raf Lee. Thank you guys uh, for liking our page and for sharing it. Talking to Associate Professor Dr. Mohammad Lokman Mohammad Issa, Chairman of International Islamic University of Malaysia, Molecular and uh, Salelu, uh, Salelu, Biology Research Cluster, Head of Central Research Animal Facility, and uh, talking a little bit about uh, some of the research that has been done in Malaysia, where we are today, what is the frozen zoo all about. And uh, Professor, just before we end our program face-to-face -face right here on Tracks FM, Professor, now where, um, where can the public get more information and details on uh, the frozen zoo program and also uh, all the other research that's done uh, by IMOLEC and also um, where can they find out all these details um, uh, from, from the World Wide Web, Professor? Would you like to uh, just let our listeners know? Yeah, you can, you can go on into uh, molecular.iium.edu.my iium.edu.my IMOLEC is I-M-O-L-E-C uh, and then we, we also have the Facebook of IMOLEC as well so the frozen zoo link will be there, and then you can have a look how far that we uh, we we perform. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor. Professor, um, probably uh, words of wisdom to Malaysia. What would you like to say to uh, everyone here, with regards of your professional research that you are doing and uh, for the environment, for the endangered species? Yeah, we like we live it together. We live together with animals and with plants and with environment. So we have to properly uh, taking care of all the things, all the assets, not just the human, because of we need each other. This is not for us, but also for the future generation, what actually we inherit for them. If we just inherit a, a world that with a lot of chaos and a disaster, there is no no way, you know. We have to to bring with the the prosperity, harmony, and a good place to live for our next generation. So keep it in your in our mind, and ensure that everybody is we we live in in a good manner soon. That's all. Thank you. All right, there you go. You heard it from Associate Professor Dr. Mohammad Lokman Mohammad Issa. Thank you so much, Professor. You have a pleasant day. 
Yes, thank you very much for, for inviting me once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, once again to our listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Tracks FM. We were talking with uh, the Associate Professor Dr. Mohammad Lokman Mohammad Issa, who's the chairman of IIUM, and that's International Islamic University Malaysia Molecular and Cellular biology research cluster head of central research animal facility that's cream if you'd like to more to find out more details on the worldwide lab it is uh i more like i m o l e c or probably you could read a little bit more about the international islamic university malaysia and the research that they are uh doing what is frozen zoo all about when it started what are their directions and uh, a very interesting topic as we were talking to associate professor dr mohammad lokman mohammad isa thank you so much for tuning in to tracks fm building up to the top of the hour 12 noon we have the news coming in from the radio news center right here at rtm angkasapuri thank you to our listeners who are on facebook that's facebook page uh, tracks fm I'm official. Thank you guys for liking the page and sharing it. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after the news at uh, 12 noon. For your latest information, get expert opinion on an issue affecting us as Malaysians and citizens of the world when we go face to face with our guests on Thursdays at 11:15 a.m. Only on Tracks FM. <laughs>